Global Commission on Drug Policy just concluded. The global war on drugs has failed, with devastating consequences for individuals and societies around the world. No shit. Time to chopper the friendlies off the embassy roof and bug out. This commission included a former U.S. Secretary of State, Chairman of the U.S. Federal Reserve, Secretary General of the United Nations, and Presidents of Brazil and Mexico. Richard Branson was there too, and he was likely the only one that could score a bag of weed. Moral hysteria led to the prohibition of alcohol in the 1920s. Marijuana, beloved of Mexican and Negroes, was banned around the same time. But the criminality and corruption involved with providing illegal alcohol to the thirsty masses proved worse than any immorality. And because it was the white man's bourbon, alcohol was legalized, taxed, restricted from minors, and cocktails all around. Richard Nixon declared the current war on drugs in 1971. It was a great way to criminalize pot-smoking hippies protesting that other war, Vietnam. But while Tricky Dick was declaring war, the CIA's Air America was exporting plane loads of opium confiture out of South Vietnam. Unlike Nixon, Ronald Reagan just said no to drugs. Uh, except when the drugs were financing mercenary contra terrorists in Nicaragua. And public service announcements notwithstanding, most victims of this supply-side drug hypocrisy were African Americans. In the past four years, the war on drugs cost 38,000 deaths in Mexico. But since 2008, global cocaine use has increased by 27%. Use of opiates like heroin, largely coming from Afghanistan, increased by 34.5%. Cannabis use is up, like, I forget. U.S. prisoner numbers rose from 300,000 in 1972 to 2.3 million today. The U.S. is now the country with the world's highest incarceration rate. That's great for the cop in prison business, but lousy for the people and the U.S. national debt. African Americans who make up 14% of regular drug users are 56% of the U.S. prison population. For a community that's got 99 problems, this one's a bitch. Of course, the only thing more profitable than illegal drugs is legal drugs. Viagra costs more than ecstasy, or so I'm told, and more hard-on pills are produced than prescribed. Rush Limbaugh must be giving out free Oxycontin samples too, because way more tabs of hillbilly heroin are produced than get pushed by doctors. So where's the war on Big Pharma? It's been proven again and again. Drugs are a health problem, not a police problem. Portugal decriminalized possession of all drugs for personal use in 2002. The sky did not fall. Court time and prison space freed up immediately. Heroin use was cut in half. Uh, the biggest problem by far has been drunken Brits looking for hash. But Canada is going on a really bad trip. The Harper government is trying to shut down Insight, a Vancouver safe injection site. Insight provides a place for addicted people to inject their drugs hygienically under medical supervision. But Harper prohibitionists argue that the provincially funded Insight harm reduction program conflicts with federal drug law. The Supreme Court decision is pending. Meanwhile, the Harper majority is also rushing to legislate prison-filling mandatory minimum drug sentences. But there is hope. The homeland of the drug wars may be chilling out. Obama's drug czar, Jill Kurlikowski, recently stated that the drug war analogy is a barrier to dealing with the nation's drug problem. He said, regardless of how you try to explain to people it's a war on drugs, people see a war as a war on them. And we're not at war with the people in this country. Whoa, that is some good shit. You want to hit that, Steve? In Toronto, for Rabble TV, I'm Umberto da Silva. He said he wanted heaven, but praying was too slow. So he bought.